Hi guys, welcome back to the Player YouTube channel. And today we've got something rather different. Kia, probably a name that you're all very familiar with now, but it wasn't that long ago that you hadn't even heard of them. I mean, it's a Korean manufacturer and some of the cars they're bringing out now are really at the top of the game. This is the Sorento and this is the GTS line. Let's take a look around it, let's get it out on the road and see whether this car is value for money. The Sorento from Kia is a rather stylish seven-seat urban crossover. It's Kia's flagship SUV in the UK and the new GT and GTS line definitely have a much more sportier look. The new eight-speed auto gearbox replaces the old six-speed and comes as standard on all models except the entry-level KX1 and remains an option on the KX2 and the KX3 models. Economy has also vastly improved thanks to the new gear ratios, with a very reasonable 46.3 miles per gallon. All variants have seven seats and are powered by a 2.2 litre turbo diesel engine, which drives all four wheels through Kia's intelligent four-wheel drive system. The car has independent self-leveling suspension, which helps control a much stiffer body thanks to some higher strength steel. The new Sorento is built in Kia's factory in Korea and comes with an industry award-winning seven-year warranty. Round at the front of the uh, Kia Sorento, get the name right this time, you do get these lovely big LED lights here and they're, they're in intuitive as well. So when you go around the corner, they sort of follow you around or go a little bit before you. And you get these sort of weird square running lights or are they running lights? JP, are they running lights? He's not shaking his head, he's not agreeing with me. They're not running lights, they're fog lights. So there you go. <laughs> I love it when we get things wrong and cameraman gets me just spot on. Let's take a look under the bonnet. So this comes with a oh, quite stiff bonnet, even though it's got some very good struts on the side to hold it up. Under here, looks very familiar. I'm guessing that could be something to do with Hyundai. You never know, but it's definitely... Uh, very easy to work on. I noticed this, if you just pull up like that, look, you can actually see everything under there. How nice is that? I mean, for the mechanics who work on it, it's got to be very, very easy and probably more difficult to actually put it back. Right, we won't worry about that. We'll do that in a minute when we're not on camera. It's a 2.2 diesel and it develops just shy of 200 brake horsepower. And 0 to 60 on this, well, it's quite a credible nine seconds, which isn't bad at all. I love the front of this, it's quite sexy looking, it's very reminiscent of a lot of other cars, but then that's Kia, they put things together. So this car really, in my humble opinion, is a bit of a mixed match between a, a Mercedes, you've got a bit of Audi in there as well, you'll see that in a minute when we go inside, and above all, it's very, very Volkswagen. But I really like the car, it's got some great lines to it, it goes well, and let me show you inside because this car comes with a bag full of extras. You get 19 inch alloys and they come with a lovely red brake caliper. Additionally, you get this really smart stainless steel sidestep and a little all wheel drive badge because this car is all wheel drive. Oh, I think you'll agree, it's quite a nice rear end. Um, it's got this large spoiler across the top here with a big brake light for safety. Um, it's got a little wash and wipe on the back, which you'd expect. But I do like the lines. Comes with a twin stainless steel exhaust, which is also quite nice. And as you would expect for 40 something thousand pounds, you do get a automatic tail lift. Well, not automatic, assisted tail lift, whatever you want to call it. Inside here, there are seven seats, but we'll talk about that in a minute because we need to check out, first of all, spare wheels, parcel shelves, and you'll probably notice there isn't a parcel shelf in here. Well, the reason is, and da 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 da, Kia, keep the parcel shelf where it should be, hidden away. And when you want to get it out, it's so easy, you just pop these little plastic things here on the side, like so, and you just pop the thing out and you pop it back in where it belongs, which is fantastic. But that will also make you wonder, well, where is the space saver? Where's the puncture repair kit? Du -du 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 -du. Another major tick in the box. Kia hit another one. Under here, full size spare wheel. 
And that means if you're out in this with your five kids, your three Labradors and rammed to the gills with luggage, you won't have to bother anyone because you can swap that wheel with another one in a matter of minutes and everyone else can sit in comfort while you freeze your fingers off. But the good thing is, it's a proper wheel and we love that it is amazing okay we're going to cut there because i want to show you how all this works and how easy it is to get in and out of those seven seats and don't forget it's seven year warranty so that means any of this goes wrong or goes rusty take it back as i said let's take a look inside here because this is quite incredible the way it all works. Okay, it's not as fancy as the Mercedes GLS that we reviewed the other week. It hasn't got all the electronic bits, but it's very practical. You get a little cable that pops down. So do your seats, one at a time, or you can have them split configuration. I do like that. There you go. Now, when they're up, all seven seats are up, or all five at the back, you have around about 150 liters space here which is probably only enough just to get a couple of shopping bags in but once that pops down like that you're up to 650 660 liters of space which is pretty big and when you get those seats down as well and you're probably looking going well how the hell do you reach them from here well again Kira thought of that because all you do is pull that lever there and another one over there You've got in the back here you've got a cup holder and a little vanity area to put your bits and pieces you've got independent heating for your two very far back passengers um, the only problem i have found it is the only thing if only they thought of it there isn't a 12 volt adapter in the back here so if you've got a couple of kids here and they want to charge something up it's going to be really difficult because these seats will be right in the way let's jump around the front or the middle bit <laughs> as we'll say, and see how easy it is to get in and out of the back seats here. So when you climb into the back, and before we do climb into the back, a couple of really nice bits and pieces here, you have a very nice sun visor, which is great if you've got young kids in the back. You don't have to purchase those ridiculous things as well. It says kid on board, and you get the big sticker marks after you've taken them off when the kids have grown up. Uh, here you have an independent rear heated seat button. You've got one of those either side, which is really nice. I mean, heated rear seats, it's fantastic. You've got, speaking of kids, you've got Isofix points here and over the other side, but not on the central one for obvious reasons. You do get reclining seats with this and they do recline quite nicely. I'm gonna leave that recline because it's gonna be a lot easier for my cameraman to follow me when I'm showing you bits inside. Let's jump inside on that note. Pull the box up. Right, so we get a nice area down here which you can put bottles or whatever you need to put. In the centre section here, we get an armrest when I can pull it down. There we go, and it's a double cup holder. That's about it really, but it's comfortable. And looking at that, check it out guys. I mean, that's proper comfy. Gets even more comfy because here on the side of the seat, there's a button so I can actually change the position of the passenger seat to suit so if there's no one in the passenger seat and i want it right forward i mean check that out how much leg room it's ridiculous or if you just jump in you can pull it back like that it's a real novel little idea that very very nice indeed let's slip that back there um independent heating at the back but no controls that's a shame i would have expected kia to have uh, nicked something out of a gls or something and whacked it in there and that would have worked very well but unfortunately you're gonna to have to rely on the driver or the passenger to set the heating up or you just turn it off down here you've got a 12 volt adapter and next to it you've got a usb adapter both very simple lovely way they've done that there is no tunnel in this car it's flat as a pancake so moving across from one side to the other is perfect but when you get to this central seating area here I wouldn't have thought you're going to want to go very far in there. You've got to have a bum like a supermodel to sit in here. It's so thin. So you can't really class that as a seat. I think it's a bit of a cheat calling this seven seats. It's more like six seats, this car. But it is there. And in an emergency, you've got to pick up a tramp or something. You've got to give them a lift. It's a perfect place to put them. Um, let's jump in the back because I think you need to see how easy it is to get in and out of the back of this car. So we'll go for that one. Catch you in a second. 
Okay, let's see how easy it is to get in and out of the back. Now, bearing in mind, this was probably designed for a couple of kids, not really adults. There's a big latch on the top here that you just pull forward like that, and then the car, the, the, car, the seat slides forward very easily. You can climb through. Yeah, it's not that easy, but you can get in here. And as an adult, it's... Um, it's pretty tight, but for a couple of kids, I should imagine it's quite a nice, comfortable place to be. There is independent heating in the back here as well. You've got this sort of large area here for knickknacks, and there's a water bottle thing here as well. And you can adjust the heating on the side here on the little panel. But let's just see how tight it is when we pull the seat back and put it into position. Uh, let's push that latch back. And even when that seat is sort of flush with the other one, it's not bad. I've got a bit of leg room. Um, I, I could sit in here. It's not the end of the world. I find it a little bit claustrophobic because there's, it's very dark in here as well. You can probably tell on the camera. These windows don't open and they are tinted as well. It makes it even darker. But it's not an unpleasant place to be. And to be honest, I think this type of car, you're going to probably use the boot space more than you are the two extra seats in the back here. Let's get round the front, get in the driver's seat and show you how many bits and pieces this car's got on it because it is absolutely ram stack full of gizmos and bits and pieces. Let's do it guys. So here we are up front in the Sorento. Well, what a lovely place to be. Seats are well bolstered, really comfortable. Speaking of seats, you get heated front seats as you would expect, but you also get air cooled front seats for during the summer on the steering wheel very reminiscent of an old Mercedes steering wheel, you get a heated steering wheel. But it's not one of those big, thick, new ones that they've got. Love it. On the right here, you've got your cruise control. You've got your menu navigation system, which comes up on the instrument panel. To the left, you've got the telephone system. And you've also got your voice recognition system, which is fantastic. Simple light system stalk there, and your wipers on the right, as you expect. And a couple of flappy paddles for that manual driving mode. Let's start her up, keyless ignition, as you would expect. Touchscreen system here as well, seven inch screen. You've got the radio, you've got media, Bluetooth, and your Apple Play. You can then go into your nav system. That will give you a full screen, or you can go split screen. And as I say, it's touch sensitive, so everything you want to touch on there will just come up as you want. There you go. Um, independent heating control panel here, and two nice big large knurled knobs either side. So it makes it very easy to use, even with a pair of gloves on. In the centre here, you've got a double cup holder, and that can be adjusted by just simply moving that in and out for bigger cups and smaller cups. Underneath this one here, although it is piano black, and we hate that because it scratches, but it still looks nice, you have two 12 volt adapters, a USB in the middle, and a wireless Apple charging bay down there. That's fantastic, love it. In the centre here, well, we've got a massive place to keep your M&Ms, the best sweets in the world, especially the peanut ones, just to let M&Ms know. There is an individual place here, little shelf that you can put in there and it will keep your wallet and your keys safe and it won't let them jingle about everywhere while you're driving along. Eight speed auto gearbox. This is a new gearbox that they fitted to this year's model. Um, really smooth, but we'll talk about that when we're out on the road. All the bits down here and all the bits over there, we'll wait until we get out on the road test. Let's go do it. So up front in the Kia, out on the road, it's a very, very nice place to be. Well bolstered seats, really comfortable, great field of vision, massive, great windscreen. Um, you've got a number of safety aids on the car as well. This particular model comes with blind spot mirrors, you get lane departure warning system, and you've got an in-town traffic system as well that can autonomously brake in an emergency, which is very good. Fuel economy, the car's currently doing around about 32 to the gallon. It's not bad for a 2.2 diesel engine. There are five variants of this car, and when I mean variants, they all come with the 2.2 engine. There are a couple of petrol versions, and there is two different gearboxes so you've got the manual six-speed gearbox and this particular one has the 
automatic eight-speed gearbox. The only difference between the two, if you are towing something, the auto gearbox will only tow up to two tonnes, whereas the manual gearbox will tow up to two and a half tonnes. Price-wise, the car in the KX1 variant, which is the very bottom of the range, the entry level, starts at £29,000. At the top of the range, like this car, the GTS, with all the extras on it, retails around about £42,000. Let's check out a few other last bits and pieces before we finalise this review. The Sorento comes with five different driving modes. You've got a comfort mode, there's an eco mode, and there's a smart mode. Now the smart mode actually predicts the road surface you're driving on and the conditions you're driving in and adjusts the steering, the suspension, and the gearbox ratios accordingly. Finally, you get a manual mode where you can actually slip the car into manual and use the flappy paddles. been really enjoying driving this car it became more of a surprising car to me I wasn't expecting this level of quality from Kia and I'm literally blown away with with all the versatility of this car you've got the off-road you've got it in town and you've got great motorway driving as well you've been watching me Andy Jones on the player and don't forget like subscribe and comment at your will or your peril Thanks for watching guys, another car next week. I look forward to doing another review for you. Catch you later.